Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a new special episode because today we've got a new lens. This is a 7200 f4 and it is light it is small it is compact but do we really need a 7200 f4 when we could go for a 2.8 which is kind of considered as the holy grail of all lenses well that's a question we're gonna answer today together because this 7200 f4 i've been testing it for a few days and i've been impressed by a lot of things but this might not be a lens for everyone so I kind of want to dig into that. So if you're ready, let's get started. You see, this is the kind of lens that is absolutely perfect for this kind of landscape. And today I kind of want to dig into first the ergonomics, but also mainly who might be this lens for and who might it not be for, because I think that will be the biggest question that you've ever had. And for the small story, back in the days when I was with Nikon, I know, I actually bought a 7200 f4 only to return it within a week and then get the 2.8. So I can kind of attest to the changes between f4, f2.8 beyond just the bulkiness and the blurness, which is obvious obviously great but there is something that I think a lot of you should know before you invest in any kind of lens so first of all let's talk about the ergonomics because we've got something that is extra special in this lens and I'm so excited about it because I wish that existed on the 7200 2.8 version especially the f2 and it is right here it is those little buttons that one that says macro right here this is a macro mode for this lens, which means it turns into a 7200 f4 macro, which is so cool. I was actually taking photos of plants, of flowers in macro mode, and I was really impressed because I had a 90 millimeter macro mode back in the days. And I remember it was really fun. And then I got curious. I compared the minimum focal distance between this lens and the 90 millimeter specialized for macro. And it turns out that it is actually a smaller focus distance on this lens than on the 90 millimeter. Obviously it's at 70 millimeter, but even at 200 millimeter, we're at 0.42 meters and at 70 millimeter, 0.26 meter, which is really, really close. If you look at when I'm shooting those plants, you can see I'm literally against those plants. So I find having that on such a big lens or like when I call it big, it's not so much in size, but in so much in usability that it really adds something special that wasn't there before. On top of that, we also have, uh, so all the classic modes, which is stabilization mode, one, two, three active. And then we have OSS, which is to override the autofocus with the ring at any time and obviously we have the AMFF switch. And like every good Sony lenses, we have our little buttons right here, right here, right here, in order to be able to press. And I personally always put those buttons straight to eye focusing. That means that in any mode I am, I can press here and it's gonna go straight to the face and focus on that face. So it's extremely helpful. Now, this lens is a little particular because if you look at it, if you can tell, the glass is clearly different than my 7200 right here. You see there's this big black part that is a different type of construction. Obviously it's f4, not 2.8, but there is something that's very interesting. It is that the barrel actually comes out. So it is a moving barrel just like this that we also find on the 7200 f2.8 of Canon. Now, having it on the F4 allows it for a really compact design. And honestly, it's about 15% lighter and shorter than the previous version. So for me, it's a no brainer. If you're looking for F4, if you're looking for really long lens that you can carry and travel with for everywhere, I think this might be a really good option, but there's many reasons why you might also never want it. And personally, that macro mode might make me think that I want this lens more than a 2.8 in circumstances. I'm gonna talk to you about it. So all the shots you've seen so far and the future one have been edited with my presets, but most importantly, they've been shot with the A6700 for all the shots in LA and with my A1 for the shots that are here in French Polynesia that are more nature landscape. And that is important for you to know, 7200 f4 lens for me is the perfect lens for anything that is related to a little bit of landscape, nature, anything where you don't need to shoot extremely low light or you don't want an extra creamy bokeh. And let me know right now in the comments if you have a 7200 f2.8 or f4 or which one you consider what you think of a f4 lens because that might be the most important question in this whole release of that new lens and i really want us to make it a discussion so let me know in the comments what you think okay so if 
you're trying to get a lot of portraits of people. If you're really into portraits, I would actually recommend you to wait and get a 7200 f2.8 because that will work a lot better for your needs than f2.8. Why is that? Not only for the creamy bokeh, but also because you'll be able to shoot in lower light, which means with a specific type of shoots, maybe at dusk or at dawn, and have a little bit of portraits cranking up without having to crack up the ISO as much. And that can make for really moody shots. Also that 2.8, yes, it will look good. It will help isolate your subject a lot more than that f4. Although I will say, hey, 200 millimeter f4 still gets you a decent amount of bokeh, but it won't be that 7200 2.8 that everyone raves about. There is a reason wedding photographers don't use 7200 f4 for weddings, but they use the 2.8. It's for the low light, but also for the ability to isolate subjects very easily from their background. So yeah, if you're into portraits, that's not your lens. If you're a hybrid shooter who does a lot of travel photography like me, this might be a lens that is possible for you. Let me explain. You're gonna be switching between landscape, nature, cityscape, and a little bit of everything in between as a landscape photographer. And honestly, for the weight and size gain from a 7200, this fits without any issues in my bags, even mounted on the cameras, which the 7200, I still have to force a little bit in. This is gonna be a great advantage because you'll be able to have those different situations of shoot and still yield great results. And if you want something really low light, then you get a 1.8 lens in your bag of 50 millimeter or 35 millimeter, and that will save you on those like low light shoots out there. But honestly, for everything that's daytime, as you can see on those shots, all those shots have been shot with the F4, and that was way more than enough. You don't need to shoot the landscape at F2.8 unless you're trying to achieve something very creative or you have a very specific idea in mind. So for me, this lens is perfect if you're doing travel, if you're doing landscape, if you're really oriented towards nature or even want to do macro photography, but don't want a lens that it does just 90 millimeter f1.8 macro. Because on top of that, when you do macro, you kind of want to shoot with a higher aperture to have more depth of field. So if you have an, a macro that's f1.8, 1.4, you'll never shoot it at 1.8 in my opinion, because uh, it's gonna have like half a centimeter of depth of field and you're gonna be wanting to shoot it at like f8, f10. And so that lens would be perfect for that. And before I forget, let's talk about the autofocus because the autofocus has been extremely fast and it's something I am tired of saying for all those new lenses, guys, but autofocus is ace. It's super fast, responsive, very silent. And yeah, apparently there is no focus breathing either. So. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I wanted to intro you a little bit that lens here in the beautiful hills of French Polynesia. And honestly, it's been a pleasure to shoot with it. It's very light. I feel like it's a good addition in my bag, uh, but I would not replace my 7200 2.8 with this because I already have it. If I had nothing, I may consider it if I had a specific dedicated portrait lens like a f1.8, 1.4, 1.2 on the side, then I might be like, hey, you know what? This is gonna be good enough. This will help me get those kind of shots that will be very compressed and that will be much further that will work great even at f4. So let me know what you think. Now remember, gear is one thing, but progressing with your skill might be the most important thing ever in photography. So get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new, join the next 30 Day Adventure to Great Photos training, link in the description, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.